All right, unit three, lesson one, scale drawings. So, is this, let's see, is that the same hippo? So, basically what's happening is this kid, Diego, took a picture of a hippo. All right, and that's the, uh, the original one. Uh, <clears throat> then he edited it. Now, which one is the distorted image? Okay, how can you tell? Is there anything about the pictures that could measure that could measure to test whether there's been a distortion? So he has his original, <clears throat> and then he basically makes two other images from the original. Maybe he's like uh, uh, cropping, cut, cutting and pasting an image so he can print it out on a printer and make a sticker or something like that. Who knows, right? I used to do that back in the day when I was a kid. I think it was like a fabrications uh, class I took in high school. And we did stuff like that. Um, but which one? Which one? Which one's messed up? A or B? Okay, so hopefully you already realize that A is distorted. All right. Why? Because it looks a little compressed. Right? It looks like the image kind of got like squeezed down right so it looks like compressed so how can you tell compressed I, I would say compressed i mean if you have another way of describing it that's perfect okay and as you can see b looks okay right b looks like it it works it looks very similar right and in fact your unit Unit three is called similarity. So let's get that out of the way. Similarity, that's the main idea of the unit. Okay, is there anything about the pictures that you can measure to test whether it's been distorted? Um, what do you guys think? I noticed that uh, like the, your diameter, right? Looks to be the same that way, but when it goes this way, right? Something's very, very off, right? Like the radius here is congruent to the radius there the radius here and here is definitely not the same right so those are my congruency uh, tabs that's kind of like how I would describe it the legs look to be a little shorter too right like the legs look to be shorter but still have the same width right that's something to, to kind of acknowledge All right, so we just talked about something that applied a scale factor, okay? If you look back at the hippos, it looks like the original to the hippo B. Hippo B looks what? Maybe half that size, maybe a third of the original size. So that's something to, to notice right there. Um, that's called a scale factor. So if you look to the right, you see these two circles, right? Now, if this circle with the radius of 0.5 turns into the circle with the radius of 1, it actually goes through a scale factor of 2. That means the radius, okay, gets multiplied by 2. And that's how you get 1. So 0.5 to 1, how do you do that? Well, that's a scale factor of, again, 2. Now, if you were to go the other way with it, okay, if you were the circle with the radius 1, and then you turn into a 0.5 circle uh, radius, okay, you're actually getting smaller with a scale factor of a half, because now you're half of your former self, okay, and since a multiplication. So when we talk about scale factors, you are actually multiplying, now that you mention it, okay, so... Scale factor does involve multiplying 
by your scale factor, humbly known as K. Okay, if you ever see me denote it with K, I'm talking about scale factor. Okay. And again, scale factor is the factor by which every length in an original figure is multiplied when making a scaled copy. So if you've ever copied something and made it smaller for like your, uh, your research paper, <clears throat> your history paper, right? You take a big, huge image and you shrink it down. That's uh, applying a scale factor. All right, so 1.2, stretching, sketching, stretching. All right, so a dilation is actually a rigid, it's not a rigid motion, but it is a transformation, okay? So this is, a, if you remember transformations, we had what, translations, reflections, rotations. This is a transformation. Now, it's not a rigid transformation because the original figure does not stay um, uh, the same. Uh, your parts can change, uh, as you saw with the hippos, right? So a dilation with a center O and a positive scale factor R. Oh, it looks like they're using R. Okay, so let's go back. They're using R. There we go. So they're using R. Okay, that's fine. In college, we used K, but it's it's okay. <laughs> All right, so positive scale factor R takes point P along the ray OP to another point whose distance is R times farther away from O than P is. If R is less than one, the new point is really closer. So, okay, so... <clears throat> Let's take a look. Um, let's see the examples. All right, so number one, dilate H using C as the center of a scale factor. So the distance from C to H, right? From here to here. And now it's gonna be multiplied by a scale factor of three, and that's using C, okay, to H. <clears throat> H is 40 meters from C, so right away, I'm thinking, well, that means H is going to move, right? You have 40 meters, millimeters, times that scale factor, which is three, right? So you're gonna have a 120 millimeter uh, line segment once you're done. So there's our 40. There's a scale factor of two. There's a scale factor of three. So we just dilated H, right? Here's H prime, the image, right? And as you can see, we actually have the 120 because the distance just became three times as much as the original. So that's a very simple example of what a definition of a dilation is. Okay, and what they were explaining up here is exactly what happened in number one. Okay, now we have a scale factor of three-fourths. Notice three-fourths is less than one, right? So O in this situation, because we're, we're actually we're dilating K using O, so K is actually going to get closer to O instead of further away because it's, a, it's less than one, your scale factor is less than one. So we got 40 millimeters, right? And then they are multiplying that by three fourths. So you should get, what is, let's see, so again, for a lot of you who haven't done this in a while, nothing's wrong with it. Okay, when you're multiplying a fraction with a whole number like that, numerator times the whole number, so 3 times 40 equals 120, divide it by 4, and you should get 30. Okay, so that means your new distance is going to be 30 millimeters. Okay, so K...
prime is going to be right there. And this is the new length or distance um, given because of the scale factor. So with scale factors, the distance can get larger or the distance can get smaller. Depends on the scale factor. Okay. So again, if uh, your scale factor is greater than, sorry, one distance increases. or size increases. So let me Okay. There we go. And if your scale factor is less than 1 but definitely greater than zero. So this means it's a fraction, okay? Your distance or size decreases. Okay, so definitely remember that idea, okay? All right, mini-me. So this one's a little bit more tedious, okay? And they say that we're gonna be dilating this figure, which looks like a snowman, right? Um, using center P, the scale factor of half. Okay, challenge accepted. So I'm gonna start with D. Actually, I'm gonna start with B. So if you guys notice, the what's half of the distance between P to B? It looks like right here, right? Of course, I could use perpendicular bisector to actually create that if I have room. I'm starting to doubt if I do have room, so I'm just going to guesstimate, okay? I know that D and B have to be directly above one another, so that's something I need to make sure. So here's D prime. Here's B prime. Okay, I know C is... Okay, so notice what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure. So these are actually lines of projection. Okay, so because again, we're we're using center P for this dilation. So lines of projection help me to make sure that I line up my dilations correctly for each point. For example, I know C is directly below D, right? So C prime is also going to be directly below D prime, okay? So as you can see, I'm just going point by point going through here. Let me get circle A here figured out. I'll use point A. So there's my line of dilation. I know A is directly above B in directly below C prime, so here's A prime. Okay, let's try, let's see, ooh, the circle, right? I could do the circles now. So I got circle centered at C prime with the radius of C prime D. That is not a circle at all. There we go. So if you've ever taken an art class, I'm sure you've done scale drawings before. Right? I remember, I think I was a sophomore. I took art. And we did stuff like this. And we went point by point. I remember that. So there we go. So as you can see, I'm slowly getting my small scale drawing. Let me start with 
each. Okay, so you can see how I'm using my lines of projection. Right now I'm getting the arm joints. I'm probably going to erase my lines of projection later so I can clean it up, make it look pretty. Right. Okay, and let's see, what else do we got? Oh, the, the joints, right, and the hands. So let's get the... Uh, Let's get the, I want to go ahead and clean up my lines of projection because it's starting to get real messy. There's point I, okay. I'm kind of guesstimating on that one. It looks like half, actually, let's go a little further. Right, because like you have this distance here, and I'm trying to half it because my scale factor is a half, right? So that's what I'm trying to do there. Okay. So there's my arm. Let's do the hand. All right, there's J. I'm trying to go half of that, right? And do you guys notice something? Like, this piece seems way too lengthy, right? So maybe I messed up there. Maybe I went a little too far. So let's see. Let's erase that. Let's shorten it. Or better yet, it looks like this part of the arm looks congruent to that part of the arm. So I'm just going to go ahead and just do a nice copy and paste, see if I can rotate without changing too much of the length. And it looks like I'm accidentally dilating here. Yeah, it looks like I accidentally dilated. So that didn't really work with the copy and paste because I had to rotate. Womp womp. So I'll tell you what, I'll just think that's good-ish. And then just move it over. There we go. Looks a little bit better, right? So notice how you can even see it if you didn't dilate correctly. That's something good to use to notice. All right, F, uh, definitely. Uh, what do you guys think? It's about right there. All right, and then, oh, I forgot to label. We got J prime and I prime for the arms, for the right arm, The the in reference to the snowman, <laughs> sorry. And then G, right? And I think that will be a very good scale factor. Okay. Definitely the arms are not perfect. The arms are not perfect. Like already I noticed that G prime should probably be a little bit more over. Like the arm needs to bend a little bit more. So notice how you can spend a good amount of time adjusting your your sketching right okay so as you can see the snowman is entirely half the size of the original figure right and notice how the lines of projection are very very useful all right um so yeah that's a great example so in a nutshell, uh, a dilation with a center P, so that's your, your point of projection. 
okay, with a positive scale factor of k takes point a along p to a prime just by multiplying your scale factor. Oh, and now they use k. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, so going back, I don't know why they switched it up on me. It's totally fine to use k to represent scale factor. No idea why they wanted to switch it up on us. Okay, so they used R in this situation, but just use K. If you use R, it's fine. But I'll understand the context. All right, so you basically just multiply um, whatever the original distance is. So originally you had P to A, right? You multiply it by a scale factor, and notice how it's now P to A prime. So maybe your, your K value was a fraction there, okay? It looks like a third, right? Like this part is a third of the original line PA. So maybe the scale factor for that example, if you get smaller, is a, is a third. But if it gets larger, right, like P to A prime, and then it goes to PA, that scale factor is three, because it's three times as far. But notice that's the same with every single point, right? Like if you multiply by three here from P to C prime, it now just launches out three times as much to see. Same thing with B prime. So the nice thing about scale factors is they are applied to every single point of your figure. Okay, just like the snowman, I kept on using half for each point, point by point. Okay, have a beautiful day. Thank you.